Happy holidays, Star Wars fans. This is Star Wars Questionnaire Channel, and I am Adam, the Star Wars Questionnaire. This is the second part of a series dealing with the question, how was the Empire defeated? This time, we will be exploring the Legends version of the defeat. Unlike the canon version, the Empire fought for over two decades before being defeated, but was never completely destroyed. While there were many turning points and singular events that led to the defeat, we will be exploring what I feel to be the four biggest contributors to the feat of the Empire and Legends. Similar to canon, Palpatine had never established a clear line of succession to prevent chaos after his death or Vader's. He had gone so far as to create clones of himself, feeling that he alone could lead the galaxy. After his death on the second Death Star, without a direct heir, anyone with a claim went for it. A few emperors were declared, but few had claimed that all could accept. Even when an emperor would be called by the Moth Council, many factions of Imperial Loyalists would not rally behind them, weakening the Empire against the newly named New Republic, who had a very clear process of calling a new Chief of State in the event of the death or resignation of their leader. Perhaps one of the most significant reasons for the defeat was the lack of unity within the Empire. The Empire splintered into many factions. Yet unlike canon, these splinter factions were dangerous, but the fact they had splintered led to infighting between these factions. No matter how dangerous a faction was, the Republic was able to bring all their forces to individual factions, who were unable to fully commit to defending against these attacks as they were already infighting with their own former comrades. To show just how crippling these divisions were, let's take a look at a couple of examples of what happened when the Empire was united either by unified purpose or a singular figure taking control. Thrawn in the year 8 ABY took command of the fractured Galactic Empire and in 9 ABY launched a campaign that within 6 months had doubled the size of the Empire and by his death had regained control over half the galaxy. In 10 ABY, the factions of the Empire rallied together and recaptured Coruscant. In 12 ABY, after Natasha Dalla forced the reunification of the Imperial splintered factions, Gilead Pillion would launch a resounding campaign that would cause the New Republic to enter a period of peace with the Empire. When united, the Empire was generally far more than a match for most of the Republic forces against them, clear up until 17 ABY, which signifies just how disastrous the disunity was. Unlike canon, most Imperial troops were very well trained, and after Thrawn took command, there were entire legions of clones made of the best Imperial soldiers to fill the ranks. Despite how good the soldiers were, they were poorly served by their officers. Outside of a few key military leaders, the Empire was composed mainly of inflexible military officers, similar to Cannon. Also like Cannon, the destruction of both Death Stars and the Executor really cut deeply into the Imperial Officer Corps, especially in the mid-level officer ranks. Most of the Imperial military hierarchy was unable to see the bigger picture and come together. Besides the very few brilliant commanders like Grand Admiral Thrawn, most of the effective military officers were only competent and unable to recognize when to attack and when to retreat, leading to disastrous battles that caused the Empire to lose ground. Now this last point is perhaps the main difference between Legends and Canon. The Emperor and Vader had both been very powerful on the dark side. So powerful, they took complete control of the battle coordination of the fleets and ground troops in their vicinity. The loss in them both at Endor completely crippled the Imperial military's ability to wage war, as they became so reliant on the force's guidance that the sudden absence of it shocked them and made it impossible for their ships and crews to act coherently. This would also result in the massive decline of the Empire to within five years losing all but a quarter of their holdings. This was fixed by Grand Admiral Thrawn, who used the abilities of the mad Jedi clone Joris Caboth to fuse them with that coronation, but not make them so reliant that they couldn't to do without it. Indeed, this improved their performance even without it. Yet the damage had already been done, and there was simply no way to be able to recover their empire after this, and really began the decline of the empire. These four themes, I feel, were what contributed the most to the defeat of the Galactic Empire and Legends. Unclear line of succession, disunity, uninspired military leadership, and the force, or lack of it, all contributed to the ultimate peace treaty. Anyways, this concludes the second part of this uh, series. 
leave your comments down below if you feel something else has served equally to bring the Empire to sneeze and legends. And as always, leave your Star Wars questions because they help out the channel with continuing to make videos. Have a wonderful day and may the Force be with you.